Welcome to the Whole Church Podcast. Your favorite church unity podcast. Probably. If you want to hear from pastors, professors, and everything in between, right, sure. And, you know, the occasional train talk. Right, right, yeah. Uh, have we got the podcast for you? Okay. Uh, welcome to the Whole Church Podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Knoll, and this is my co-host, your co-host, our favorite person in the world, Tiberius Wong. Yeah. Just TJ. Mm, TJ Blackwell. We'll get that right eventually. Okay, so... You want to tell them uh, how they can help us out? Because right. before we do anything else, we want them to help us, right? So that's that's the a great way, way they help us first. Yeah, yeah. A great way for y'all to help us out would be if you share our podcast on your Facebook profile, on your Instagram. Uh, uh, take just, a picture of it, put it on your Snapchat. Like, yeah, I'm listening to these guys. Type out the words, dumb. and then pass out transcripts to all your friends. Uh, print out business cards for us. Yeah, thanks. just go to the streets, flap street evangelism, but. For the podcast. Yeah, we'll get yeah. you eventually and we'll pay you for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, we won't. We, we have no money. <laughs> Thus, why we also need people to support us on Patreon. Yeah. So yeah, you can support uh, us on Patreon. And at, at the whole church yeah. podcast is, you just go to Patreon, type that in, you can find us. And um, just as low as $3 a month, that you can as get as $1 all, a month. Yeah. You get all of our extra content and also know that you're helping us try and create more church unity and get the word out. We have a lot of needs as far as like hardware, software. A lot of traveling expense. We're going to Kentucky in like three weeks. So we really need gas money, guys. <laughs> all right. Does that, does that wrap uh, that up, you think? I think so. Is that all the ways they can help us? Send me a private jet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that being said, uh, let's introduce our guest today is uh, Father Pat of St. Matthew's. Is it St. Matthew's Church? St. Matthew Catholic Church, yep. Okay. Awesome. And... uh. Yeah, do you want to just tell them some about yourself and the church? Sure. So, um, so St. Matthew uh, was founded uh, as a parish community in 1986 um, uh, down in South Charlotte, right, uh, right off of uh, Ray Road exit of 485. At the time, that was the dead end of 485. Um, wow. And in fact, I'm, I'm in 1986. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure the 485 was even there actually at that point. But it had been. Pl- it was planned for an exit of, of 485. So that's part of the reason why the church b- bought the land down in this area because of the projected growth. And so we founded the community. Was officially founded in 1986. Um, the founding pastor, Monsignor Joseph Karen, uh, began by meeting with um, a congregation of probably about 250 people. Um, in, in Tower Place Movie Theater. That was the first place that they met. Um, and for the next three years, plus or minus, they met um, in that movie theater and some uh, local uh, Protestant churches that were kind enough to lend us a little bit of space on Sundays when they weren't having services. Um, and so for the first three years, that's kind of what happened. They sort of met in these, in these um, alternate sites until 1989 when the first building was built, um, which was a multi-purpose building with a gym and a few classrooms. And you said that was founded by Monsignor? Monsignor. Uh, what does that mean? Monsignor, uh, Monsignor is a title given to uh, a priest that um, is recognized by the church as making a particularly, uh, particular contribution to the church. So it's like, an on- it's like an honorary title. It doesn't, it's just an honorary title. It'd be, it would be, like calling somebody sir, sort of, you know what I mean? Like, mm. as opposed to mister, you know what I mean? Yeah, we should um, add the sir tier to the Patreon. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You, you it's like more money, you get a special. Catholic Church. That's right. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so the, the, that first building was built in 1989. From there, the parish continued to grow. 1996 is when the actual church building was built. Um, and, and, and the parish, because of the growth in South Charlotte, um, grew very, very rapidly. So from those first 250 families in 1986... We're now um, more than 10,000 families, almost 11,000 families in re- registered on our roll. So that's families, not people, right? Yeah. So um, that's probably, you know, 35,000 people or something officially were enrolled, right? I can't, I can't yeah. say that yeah. I see them all every Sunday. I would like to see them all every Sunday, but, but there I, are don't, members. I don't know where I would put them if they all showed up, but, <laughs> but, um, but it would be awesome. I would love to have that problem. It's okay. Um, we don't plan for you all to show up. And, right. I, I got some tits. I'll, I'll set them up time. outside. We'll, we'll figure it out. So anyway, so we've grown a lot and, and it's a very active... Uh, Number of families, obviously, it's a very active congregation, a lot involved in uh, not only worshiping together but serving the community in various ways and uh, growing in faith together. So that's St. Matt's. Yeah, I've heard it three or four times now, and still that number ten thousand families just is like 
messes with my brain. I'm like, wow, that's that's crazy. I mean, Catholic churches tend to be bigger than in size. We tend to be larger yeah. congregations than many of our Protestant brethren, right? You know, the, oh, yeah. you, you tend to have more churches with smaller congregations. Uh-huh. We tend to have larger churches, but fewer of us, fewer of them, right? Yeah. But 10,000 families is a lot, even for a Catholic church. I mean, it's, oh, it's yeah. a big, that's a big one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm used to, uh, I mean, I guess my church is probably two or 300 people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, for some reason, when I think of church, I always still go to like my grandparents' church or what's in my head. And I'm like, oh yeah, we had like almost 20 people. It was great. <laughs> See, my church is like three families. One of them is mine, but we have like 24 people. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, wow, that's that's really good stuff. And it's really encouraging hearing that the Protestant churches were able to help in the beginning years. So Absolutely, like, yeah. Even from the beginning, we have this kind of story of church unity. So that's fantastic. Promising. Fantastic place to start this podcast off at. Um, th- did you want to start the icebreaker question now? Yeah, well, so our icebreaker question for you uh, is if you were to, for some reason, go into a coma or just... Wake up tomorrow. Be frozen like Captain America. Yeah. yeah. And it Which was nice. 2069 instead of 2019. What would you look up first? It's the first thing you would investigate. We if you want to think about yeah, it, we'll start we first if you want to think about it. Okay, you start first. I think he knows what he wants. Oh, yeah. See, I have, I have, I have a split answer because I'm, I'm kind of torn. I would either immediately try to investigate what social media is popular and how people are using it. Because that will tell me how people are currently communicating and what kind of language they're using. Because even if, you know, it's still going to be English most likely in America, but it'll be a very different type of English because we change how we speak so frequently. So that that would be one thing i think of. Or more likely, I would look up what happened to Google, if Google's still around. And if not, who took over Google? What's going on with like all the big companies, Google, Amazon, that kind of stuff? Just so I know who's got the power, you know? Yeah, who bought out Disney? Or who all did Disney buy out? Is it now the United States of Disney? I want to know these things. I think I would look up uh, Super Smash Brothers <laughs> to see if there's one or like ten new games. I think that'd be really cool. But uh, there's really nothing Not else where, that actually... That's where you yeah, would go? There's nothing else that really stood out to me. Like, what do I need to know? Not really anything. I mean... <laughs> I think honestly, if I woke up out of in a hundred or however many years it is from now, you know, fifty years from now, I feel like I mean, and this is a serious answer, but I feel like the first thing I would do is like try to find a newspaper or whatever served as a newspaper at that point, right? There might not be yeah. printed newspapers, so cool. um, because I would just want to know what the headline of the day was, right? Because I feel like yeah. that would probably tell me a lot. Yeah. The headlines right, like, are already crazy. So. Right, but like whatever's on the front page of the front page, even if it's an electronic page. Of a news source, yeah. right? I would want to know what that was because I feel like that would tell me what I would have to answer, whatever question I would have to answer yeah. next, right? Nothing else. That's probably the best starting point. Yeah, yeah. just go to CNN yeah. if it's large. If it's still CNN. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's a good answer. That, that is good. My answer is a me answer. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, we're gonna jump on into our questions. Um, we. Like using for like a structure, just how we word things is it's sort of like a tier system we borrowed from one of my old professors who was on the podcast, where it just talks about how um different what was it not well, they were not like tensions what would you say different doctrines fall within like the spectrum of this like either a first tier issue where we can't even say we're, we're both Christians if we don't agree on this kind of deal or second tier would be something we can disagree on still say we're Christians but maybe not go to the same church and then third tier is according to him would be stuff like we can go to the same church, disagree on, probably pick on each other about it, and it's not even a big deal. Tertiary issues. Is yeah. Two, three. Yeah. 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 So we, we like to use that format when we go through. And I, I think the only – it took me a good minute to think of a primary issue between the Catholic Church and Protestants. Because I think for the most part, we all like, yeah, we all know we believe in the same Jesus. So I was like, hmm, this is interesting. But I think, one, a lot of Protestant believers – have this misconception that Catholics pray to saints or pray to Mary like they're gods, like almost like idolatry. Mm-hmm. But that's not quite the case, is it? It's not. No, we 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 worship. I think we worship the same God as you guys do, right? And, yeah. and we believe yeah. that there is no other no other God beside Him, right? So, um, so no. Although although you know, it, it is true that the saints. Um, play an important part in Catholic spirituality, right? 
Um, and, and, and I think the, the way I like to describe it is this. Josh, if I was, if you and I were like best friends from, you know, from birth, right? And we, we were hung out together and I see you all the time and I hang out with you all the time. And I just got some bad news. Maybe I had a bad you know, health issue or, or my, you know, somebody in my family was in trouble or, you know, whatever. I, I, I came across the thing where I was, you know, I was upset about something, right? Yeah. I would, I would, and I was having dinner with you that night, right? I would probably, or even if I wasn't, I would call you up and say, Josh, I, I really need you to pray for me, right? Yeah. You know, I just got this bad night, bad night diagnosis, right? And, and what would you say? I'd say, let's pray right now. Right. You'd say, let's yeah. pray right now. Or you'd say, absolutely, I'll pray for you. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to church tomorrow and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pray for you extra hard at, at the service or whatever, right? Yeah. I'm going to tell other people to pray for you, right? That's yeah. what you do. You're my friend, right? Um, that's, that's our relationship with the saints, right? Yeah. These are people that have obviously lived before us, um, that, that the church has recognized as being, as being holy people, right? They've yeah. lived extraordinary lives or, or the church wouldn't have, the church wouldn't know about yeah. them universally, <laughs> right? So, yeah. so there are certain, you know, we believe that, that anybody that's in heaven is a saint. Right. Anybody that's in heaven who's gotten to heaven is now a saint. Right. Because that's perfection. Right. Um, but there are certain people that the church has recognized throughout history that 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 have done these extraordinary things or lived extraordinary lives. And 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 the church has recognized that and has uh, holds them up as examples to follow models of faith. Right. So they, they serve as models of faith for us. Right. Just like. Yeah your holy grandmother would or something like that, right? You have these models of faith. Um, but they're, but instead of being just for your family, it's for a much wider family. Yeah. But there are also people that we ask to pray for us, right? Just like I would ask you to pray for me yeah. or ask my grandmother to pray for me. I would also ask Jesus's mother to pray for me because yeah. Mary, because she's probably really close because to she's really close, you know, right? I mean, you don't, you're not too, you're not close. You're not closer to many more people. People yeah. than you are to your mother, right? Yeah. So we know that Mary is very close to her son. So Mary, please, you know, intercede for me on behalf of you know. I know you pray for me. Intercede for me because you, because I know that you would pray for me like you would pray for your own yeah. son, right? So that's our relationship with the saints, and and so you know, different Catholics might have different devotions to different saints because my name's Patrick. All right, so my <laughs> first name is Patrick, right? So. I have somewhat of a devotion to St. Patrick's because I feel a connection with them, right? Yeah, I was really hoping he was going to say Patrick Star. No. <laughs> well, for another person, they might, you know, for an Italian from Brooklyn, they might not have any connection to St. Patrick. They might pray yeah. to St. Anthony of Padua because he was Italian, and that's the parish they grew up in. Yeah. You know? So different people might feel connected to different saints because of their particular stories or because of what they went through or an experience that they feel like they have similar. Yeah. And so they might ask for that saint to pray for them because they feel kind of close to that person. Even though they've never met them, we know that we're in communion with them, right? We believe, yeah. and you mentioned this, Josh, earlier when we were talking offline, right? Yeah. That that um, one of the things that we believe as Catholics when we go to Mass is that there's the people that are there that we see, like sitting next to us in the pew, yeah. but there's really way more people there. Right, mm -hmm. that we're that we're actually praying with all the saints in heaven. That they're all there. We we just can't. They're present to us. Yeah. We just can't see them, but they're praying with us. They're praying for us. You know, yeah. they, they're in a great place. We don't need to pray for them. They're good. Right, they're in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. But we, but but we <laughs> we would be really appreciative of their prayers, and we're really really glad that they're with us praying because we believe that in the communion of saints, we're connected to people not only sitting around us. But with all people who have, who share the faith of all time, right? And so those saints are part of our family. Yeah. So that's our relationship to the saints. It's not yeah. we don't worship them; they're not God, right? <laughs> yeah. But but there are examples of faith for us. There are friends. There are there are. Yeah. You know, but inner church unity goes beyond just who's here, but absolutely, even yeah, yeah. That's just, um that's just one of those sentiments that the Protestant Church lost when well the split happened. We only sort of lost it. It's, it's actually something I was thinking, you know, when he was talking about it, it's, you know, it, we talk about this to, you know, Billy from a Baptist church, and he's like, oh, that's so weird. But if I were to tell him, yeah, I go to my uh, grandfather's tombstone and I talk to him, that's normal. That's accepted. But it's, it's sort of the same thing as what it sounded like. You know, if I go there or um, me and my fiance, we, we were on a camping trip, and she, she recently lost her grandmother as well. And 
we see two red cardinals. You know, there's the whole, like, whatever mm-hmm. thing about the cardinals representing those. Right. And we just kind of were like, yeah, we just smiled. Like, we could feel that they were there. And right. it's like, that's acceptable. But for some reason, yeah, you can't the idea of saints, like, because you don't know them. So that just weirds people you, out. You know, and it depends on the denomination. So, yeah. so uh, an Episcopalian or an Anglican wouldn't be as uncomfortable because, you yeah. know, because they st- don't name some of their churches after saints, right? I mean, that's not as foreign yeah. to them or a Lutheran. They sometimes do that too. So it also depends on the denomination sometimes as to how comfortable they are with that concept. The other thing is that people talk about the statues, right? That, oh, they're yeah. praying to statues, right? Um, and I would almost, you know, if your grandmother passed away, right? And you were asking for her prayers, even when she was in heaven, right? You know, you still keep the picture of your, grandmother right i mean you're not gonna like destroy all pictures of your grandmother because she died in fact even more you want the pictures around because you loved your grandmother and having anything she's ever touched or owned or thought about having the picture reminds you of her right and reminds you of things so that that's what the statues are for us you know obviously that stone piece of stone or (laughs) whatever it is is not a person Right, we're not yeah. praying to it. We don't, but but that statue reminds us of something about that scene, right? And helps yeah. us to sort of, you know, connect. So that's all. It's just a cooler way of thinking about them. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's like a photograph. Yeah, way cooler photograph. <laughs> right, yeah. a lot more expensive. So uh, we have heard. Well, I haven't heard this. You've heard this, but uh, authority outside of the Bible. Well, like you, yeah, we we talked about it last time we were here too. It was um. Like the authority the Pope has, or there's some stuff that's not in our Bible that's in y'all's Bible. Um, the like the there's seven the, books. The, the mm-hmm. Apocrypha, yeah, yeah. You would call them the Apocrypha, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What's um? I, I'm trying to find a way to ask the question. Just why, I guess? <laughs> why is there the other authority? Like, why is the authority of the Pope or these other okay. books needed? Okay, so um, let's go back to the early church, right? Fantastic. Right? So let's go back to the year, uh, you know, 112, you know, random year, okay? BC or um, AD? AD. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a good year. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it was. Well, for some, if you weren't being eaten by lions, it was a good year. So yeah. <laughs> um, so if, if, if the church was gathering in prayer, right, um, and trying to determine what the church, you know, discern what the church was teaching on something, they wouldn't go to the Bible because there was no Bible. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It, it, it didn't. Exist. It you wasn't there. Right? There was no printing press. There was. <laughs> there wasn't even. There wasn't even at that point a, a, a consensus among all Christian communities as to what the holy the, the holy books were. Right. Yeah. You know, probably they would have read the, the Old Testament because many of the Christians were former Jews or even can still yeah. consider themselves Jews. So they certainly read from the Law and the Prophets, right? Because yeah. they were familiar with that. The Gospels in one twelve. I, at that point, all of the Gospels would, be, would have been written. How well circulated they were would have been another story, right? Paul's letters, etc. Yeah. Right. So these are these are these are certainly readings and scriptures that would have been letters and stuff that would have been passed around to different and oh, yeah. different different congregations would have had copies of different ones and would, would, would have preferred different ones because oh I I remember this was read to me when I was you know, first a Christian. And so I've always really connected with that. Right. But there yeah. wasn't a Bible. There wasn't, the canon of scripture wasn't settled. Right? Yeah. And it didn't, it really wasn't settled until the fourth century or so, I think. Which is Don't quote me on that. Cause they still had like a uh, Paul or Peter would still reference the scriptures, but it wasn't, you know, a clear, this is what they meant by scriptures. And p- part of what we're talking about, even um, that they did use some of what Protestants would call the, um, and I just used the word apocrypha. Yeah, thank you. But they still use some of the books from that oh, in the New Testament. So it's like obviously some of them clearly thought that was scripture. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so, th- so if from the from the beginning of the church, there was there was a ne- there was a recognition just because there was no th- yeah. that that there was there was scripture wasn't the sole authority because there wasn't scripture. I mean, there was scripture, but it wasn't it wasn't canonized. It wasn't settled, yeah. right? So. They had to make decisions and discern, right? A lot, a lot of the councils of the early church, right? The first seven or eight ecumenical councils in the first seven or eight centuries of the church, they were all around doctrine, right? Yeah. Who is the person of Jesus, Son of God? Does that make him co? Is he equal to the Father? Is he, or is he less than the Father, right? Yeah. The Holy Spirit, the same thing. The role of Mary in the church, all that, right? That, that stuff was being debated, argued, 
sometimes violently argued, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, these were big discussions, right? And and they were relying on the authority of the church, meaning the 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 overseers, the bishops, you know, whatever you called yeah. them, right, um, to guide them. And then these bishops were coming together to to debate and 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 discuss these important issues because 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 they were important. We, we, you had to know whether or not the father was equal to the son. <laughs> you know, that was gonna, that was gonna yep. shape, you know? So there was this sense of, that, that there's enough. this authority. And, and who did the authority come from? The authority came, well, ultimately from Jesus, okay? Passed down to his apostles. They were the, they were the 12 that were with him. They were the 12 that spent the most time with him. They knew what you would, we could say they knew his mind better than yeah, they, anyone they else, probably right? They knew him better than They knew him better than anybody else. So he sent them out and, and they, we would, the Catholic Church would say they were the first bishops. They were the, they were the ones to go out and establish churches, you know, in yeah. different cities, right? And, 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 you know, even in Acts, I'm not going to get the chapter right, but when Paul goes to Peter yeah. and says, <laughs> recognizing that, that, you know, Peter, even though he didn't always agree with Peter, yeah, and he's clear about that, right? <laughs> he didn't always agree with Peter. He recognized that that Peter had a say, oh, right? That this that Peter's Peter's direction was important, right, in dealing with the Gentiles, etc. So, so there was this sense of there are these people that were with Jesus, yeah. right, and and we need we need to consult them because they knew Jesus, they know Jesus's mind, right, and 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 those overseers, those first bishops, those apostles had to pick their successors because they were being killed and, you know, or, or they were dying in one way or another. And so they needed to establish authorities in, their, in the churches they were leaving behind who who could be guided by by the, their teaching because their teaching was guided by Jesus, right? Yeah. Um, and, and Jesus said in John's gospel, you know, I'm going to leave you. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you orphans, right? I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send you a paraclete, an advocate, right? Who's going to guide you, right? Because, because let's face it. If God loves us, which I think we all agree that God loves us. Okay. Oh, if, yeah. if God loves us, he's not going to leave us orphans. He's not going to leave us floundering and trying to figure things out on our own. He's, he's not going to leave us where in a, in a situation where it is, it is, in something really important to our salvation, he's going to leave it to a matter of debate for us to figure it out on our own. He's going to send the Holy Spirit and he's going to, he's going to give us the answer, right? Yeah. So that, so that we're not out there down, going down the wrong road. We're given clear direction, right? And so that's how we view the authority of the church. The Bible is absolutely important. I mean, we, yeah. you know, we read it. I mean, yeah. we read it. We read it. We read it religiously, as you can imagine. Okay, so you know, when we come to mass, I mean, we have on a Sunday we're reading three scripture readings. You know, and you know, actually four if you count the Psalms because that's included as well, right? So we're we're reading four scripture readings every Sunday. We on a, on a weekday when we have mass, we're reading three scripture readings. You know, the the the, the prayers that the priests pray every day privately that they're obligated to pray are from scripture. You know what I mean? So wow. scripture is important. Right. Yeah. But scripture needs to be interpreted. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. one one person could look at scripture. You could look at scripture and say, well, this says this. And TJ could look at it and say, well, no, it doesn't. It says this. Right. Yeah. Well, and we must, <laughs> you know, yeah. and 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 so the authority of the church is important because over time, the 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 the, the authority of the church helps us to interpret those scriptures so that we have a consistent teaching over time. Right. Because yeah. if something was if something was true in the the decade after Christ died, because that's what Jesus taught, right? It is just as true in nineteen what here we in two thousand nineteen in two thousand nineteen, right? It didn't Whatever change. God didn't change, yeah. right? Yeah. So so the teaching of the church didn't change. So so the authority of the church helps to keep us always in line with what the Holy Spirit has always guided the church to say and do. Right. Yeah. So that we're not going off on our own and saying, well, I don't know if I agree with that. I think we're just going to believe this now, yeah. you know, which to which human nature being what it is yeah, happens naturally. What we want to do yeah, that's uh, you know, the way people view things changes throughout time. Absolutely. Truths don't. Right. Like uh, truths don't. I think in 10th grade English, I had to read this poem that was about a young girl dancing on her father's shoes. And in the poem, it says his belt hits her in the head. And the way it's worded, it's ambiguous enough that when our teacher asked the entire class, we all said it was about abuse. But when they asked 
uh, class like 40 years ago what the poem was about. She was dancing with her father and her head was resting on his belt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's how culture affects mm-hmm. how you think, right? 40 years ago, they would have never thought that because abuse is such a, we'll call it, in the news item, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? Such a current thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But humans can do that to anything. Yeah. Sure. We I do. Mean, every We're time natural. I'm in traffic, I just keep waiting on God to change his mind about that whole don't murder thing, but uh, <laughs> he hasn't done it yet. <laughs> so anyway, so, so that's why that's why the authority of the church, um, that's why we... we we, that's why we're not sola scriptura as Catholics, right? Absolutely, yeah. scripture is is important, right? But we believe that God reveals Himself in three ways, right? Yeah. In nature, in scripture, His Word, and in and and in the authority of the Church, right? Yeah. Meaning the Holy Spirit guided authority of the Church. So when we talk about the Pope, like He is all the authority, it's like. You know, yes and no, right? Like, the Pope can't come out tomorrow, for example, and say that murder is okay. He can't. And the reason that he can't... just keep dashing my hopes, guys. And the reason that he can't is because when the Pope teaches, when he is teaching on matters of faith and morals, he he is considered to be... He is considered to be teaching authoritatively when he is in communion with all the bishops of the world, Yeah. right? And in communion with the teaching of the church... For all time, right? So it's the right. church has always taught that murdering an innocent person, well, I mean, let's narrow it down, we're right? Just, we're murdering an murder innocent guys. person, right? Murdering or taking the life of an innocent person is wrong, right? Yeah. Scripture, you know, and, and, and we've, we, when we've taught that, we've taught it based on scripture and based on what the church has always taught, right? Yeah. Um, if, if Pope Francis was to come out and teach on any topic today, right? Yeah. If you look at any papal document issued by the Pope, Right, yeah. you'll you'll see, and I think we did this last time. Oh, you'll you see the, oh, that the there's a zillion that. footnotes, right? <laughs> and the footnotes are scripture and the teaching of the church in previous centuries, oh, right? So you're yeah. he's always referring back to well, the church has always taught this, and this is the and this is the the uh, uh, this is the proof of this, right? And what whereas if you're teaching, let's say, um, what would be a current topic? Uh, Abortion. Well, yes, abortion would be a portion would be one, right? But, uh, but, um, but do we need an easier one? Well, no. I mean, abortion is fine. Um, abor- abortion, in the sense that the church wouldn't change its teaching on abortion because the church has always taught that abortion is a sin, is wrong, yeah. right? So, so Pope Francis couldn't come out and say, "Well, you know, it's 2019, <laughs> and you know, we've got population issues, or or this or that or the other thing, and science is more advanced and." He would never say that because because the church has always taught yeah. that abortion is wrong from the moment of conception that that that's a child right so so and so in any teaching on on that particular issue he would refer back to those teachings and he can't teach not in communion yeah. with the rest of the church but if so, he managed to sneak every bishop in the world into the same room without realizing it and then said it it would count. Well, uh, that, that, I don't think that's possible. <laughs> yeah. Even, yeah, I don't think, right. The, the, the Holy Spirit's not going to let that happen. Right. The Holy Spirit, I would say the Holy Spirit's not going to let that happen. Right. There's going to be, there's going to be a contingent of the bishops to say, no, that's impossible. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, you can't do so, that. Right? Is it sort of like American judicial style? Is it like it has to go through scripture and also the Pope and also the current bishops and also tradition? Is it like, I mean, all these different branches have to well, you're not, agree. Well, it's not like every time the Pope says something, he's like, hey, everybody, you know, gets everybody on the phone and says, I think I'm going to do a show talking about this. What do you guys think? Like, that's yeah. always, you know what I mean? Like, he, no, I mean, yeah. he has a sense of what the bishops believe, yeah. right? And, and and he knows what the church has taught. I mean, it's well documented. Yeah. We've got 2,000 years of documents, right? So there's it's, pre, it's pretty well documented what the church teaches, right? So he is consulting theologians and other bishops, and he certainly does that, right? Um, hmm. I'm going to stop my rabbit hole chase. Good. What, how do I wear that after this? Oh. I, have, I have to do one more. What if, I mean, you, God forbid, but what if somehow someone caught the Pope? Like he said something, we were like, oh, actually, you forgot. Way back there, this guy said this. Like a previous Pope said something contrary to what you just said, and like somehow he missed it. Is there like repercussions for that? Or is there what, what would happen I mean, in that scenario? Uh, yeah, I'm sure that there would be. First of all, it wouldn't happen from the perspective of, again, before the Pope issues a, a, an official teaching on faith and yeah. morals, he's consulting a zillion people, 
I mean, it's yeah. not going to get slipped through, right? Someone's going to catch it, right? Yeah. Now, if he was speaking off the cuff, yeah, as the Pope will do now, right? 200 years ago, this wasn't an issue, right? Yeah, I follow Pope, his Twitter feed. It's you know, great. there was no media. Well, there was not no media, but there was there was no, you know, there was no airplanes. There was no news conferences. There was no Twitter feeds, right? There wasn't any of that, right? So the Pope didn't yeah. speak off the cuff ever, right? At least publicly, right? Now the Pope does do that. He, he goes and visits, you know, Belarus, and he's on the, you know, plane on the way home, and there's no news conference, you know? Mm-hmm. So the Pope does speak off the record, and, and at times he has made statements that were, quote-unquote, controversial, where he said something that people were like, "What did he mean by that?" And, well, you know, and and what is what does he do? He he he. If he comments on it again, he is very clear to to clarify what he was saying and why he was saying it, and to support it, mm-hmm. right? And to support it in scripture and tradition. I mean, you know, so so that's how the Pope would. I don't know if there was a misunderstanding. Yeah, so we get, he gets that's how he would handle that. Yeah. So I have a question, just not really about that, but. Does the Pope have access to the Vatican Library, the so-called like secret records in the Vatican Library? I mean, I would presume. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would presume he would. Yeah, yeah I would just fascinating. Yeah, just yeah. was it earlier today. His tweet was uh, Pope, Fran- Pope Francis was a uh, witness is born from the encounter with the living Jesus. Hashtag Saint Mary Magdalene, Apostle Pope, pray for us. So that wasn't an official statement. That <laughs> was just off that the was not an official statement. That was an off the cuff statement. So he's not he's good. not teaching. Solemnly yeah. on a matter of faith and morals. He's not right? proclaiming this is the truth. He, he's just saying, "Hey, this is something to think about today." It's right? very encouraging to right. feed. I mean, I think even if you're not Catholic, you should follow Pope Francis' Twitter. It's great. But uh, also, he doesn't tweet that much, so it's not like, yeah, you know, some people you follow and they get on your nerves because it's just all you see in your feed after that. Gotcha. Yeah, it's not that. He's, he's good. So yeah, solid. Um, yeah. Did you want to do speed round? Greek Orthodoxy? Um, yep, I forgot that part. <laughs> scratched it out on the notebook. <laughs> I, I meant to scratch out the stop part. Yeah. So, our, our understanding is the Catholic Church views the authority of the Greek Orthodox Church different than that of Protestant believers. Is that the case? Okay, so the relationship with the Greek Orthodox or with the Orthodox churches, there's more yeah. than just the Greek Orthodox, right? Yeah. Our, our relationship with the Orthodox churches, um, is one of we, we well is is one of like very close relatives right like yeah. he's like the relative that had a little bit of a falling out but you still love them anyway you he's know the, what I mean he's like the weird yeah. cousin right <laughs> well I don't, I don't want to call him weird right not, not <laughs> to be accused of calling him weird so oh, wow. so anyone from the Greek the, the, the split the, <laughs> the split between the uh, the the Latin ch- or, or the Roman Catholic Church or the Latin Church and the and the Orthodox churches. In the, uh, I guess it would be the 12th century, 11th century, right? Um, was, um, over some, was not, was not, there were, there was, there was a, uh, a difference in the creed, right? Uh, the, uh, on how we refer to the Holy Spirit, but we believe the yeah. same thing as they do. They just use different wording. Okay. Um, so there was, there was ostensibly a split on that, but, but, Honestly, I believe that the heart of the matter was authority. <laughs> Again, yeah. Surprisingly, right? That's what a lot of this, a lot of the division yeah. comes down to is authority, sense. right? And and they felt that the Bishop of Rome, who we would call the Pope, right, yeah. um, is is not, doesn't have authority above the other bishops, right? Fascinating. That, that he didn't, he, he, he was... I shouldn't speak. I, I shouldn't speak on this really because I don't know exactly how an Orthodox would yeah. say this. But there was a difference in the way that we we viewed the the authority of the Bishop of Rome, where whereas the Latin Church, the, the Roman Catholic Church, views him yeah. as you know the authority, right, and in communion with the other bishops. But he certainly yeah. has a prominence, mm-hmm. right, yeah. that the other bishops do not have. Right, he is the visible leader of of the union unity of the church. Yeah, definitely, we, we would charge. definitely say that. All right, that he is the yeah. visible. A reminder, witness of unity in the church, right? They didn't. They didn't see his authority in, in, in as, as being as as uh, prominent, I guess, as the Roman Catholic Church believed. So there was a split, okay? Um, but they, the the Orthodox, continue to uh, believe in the sacraments of the church in in the same way that we do. Yeah. Right. They believe what we believe about the Eucharist. Right. They believe yeah. with all we have seven sacraments. They believe all of those seven sacraments um, 
basically the Orthodox, I would say, believe all the same things that Roman Catholic believes. Okay. The main thing that divides us right now really is that authority of the Holy Father. Okay. Yeah. So we recognize that they still celebrate the sacraments and that their bishops are direct descendants of, yeah. of the, the apostles, right? That that, yeah. that chain of authority was never broken. They continue to be, to, to, to choose their, um, their successors under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, just as we do in the Latin church. They continue to celebrate the tradition of the church and hold to the tradition of the church and the beliefs of the church, just as we do. So in belief, we really are, have not diverged. So we recognize the sacraments of the Orthodox church to be valid, as valid as ours, right? So that if I was in danger of death, if I was not a priest, and if I was in danger of death, and I did not have access to a, to a, a Roman Catholic priest. The only priest I had access to was an Orthodox priest. I could go to that priest and receive the sacraments, right? Because wow. because the sacraments are valid, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know that they would see the exact same thing about us. I don't know that they would feel as comfortable doing that, but we view them as that close to us, yeah. that we would go to them in an emergency, right? Well, that That's how... So, yes, just, right. well, what's... No problem. Where there is a bit... Where there is a, 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 a more of a divergence... When we yeah. get into our Protestant brothers, right, where there is a difference in belief, right. So, so while we certainly believe in Jesus, we believe in the Trinity and all that stuff. We 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 we're all Christians, right. There is definitely a difference in the you know the the sola scriptura thing and and exactly. you know a, a, the sacraments and a lot of that stuff, right. We don't have those differences of belief with the Orthodox. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of our relationship. So that's, that's the difference between yeah. y'all. Okay. And then, man, I, I'm gonna take this. Slightly one step further, because I, I feel like I'm even, if Protestants are the rebel, I guess I'm a little bit further in some ways. I'm a big fan of some of the home group church movement right now. I don't like a lot of some of their, it's not even their teachings. I don't like a lot of their practice and how they do it, mm-hmm. but I like a lot of the ideas there. Um, I'm particularly a huge fan of the priesthood of all believers, and I don't believe in really one authority over another, even more so than like a lot of my other Protestant believers will, you know, pastors have authority and then we still have our own hierarchy sort of deal, obviously. But, um, so with that, what would us having unity in Christ look like? Is that going to be too big of a challenge for us to get through? Well, I hope sense? not because yeah. that's what Jesus said <laughs> that he wanted. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, right. That's, you know, in John's gospel, right? Yeah. He prayed that they, we all might be one. Right. I believe that that's God's will. I believe that it will happen. Yeah. How? I don't know. And I, and I think, and I think that is part of the plan in a way, yeah. you know, if it was something that we could easily do and easily solve, then we would be tempted to think that we did it. Right. Yeah. And I think Jesus is making it very clear that, that it will happen because it is his will, but it's going to be by his grace that it happens. Because left to oh, our yeah. own devices, <laughs> we're, oh, yeah. we're not going to figure it out, right? Yeah. That it is going to be an extraordinary movement of the spirit that that well, brings us together. And it is just an interesting thing to me that typically when you, when you have people who are, I'm trying to find the right way to say this, who, who are, I want to say more devout, but that sounds almost arrogant, so that is probably not the right way to say it, but. For lack of a better word, I'll say that. You know, people who are really close to God, who, you know, pray every day, read their Bible, are really into it, aren't just, you know, surface level, hey, I say I do go to camp, I go to whatever, and I, I never show up, you know. Sure. People who are really into their belief. It, it seems like those people, like if um, if I were to come to someone who, like, like a priest like yourself, I, I have no problem asking you to pray for me. You know, like we mm-hmm. have this huge divide. Whereas, I, I think, you know, from a worldly standpoint, it would be, I believe, so radically different than you, then it would almost just be constant argument. Whereas those who are more in Christ, it's like, yeah, we have this really big gap in how we believe about this. Cool. You still want to pray with me? <laughs> you know, it's like it's, sure. it's almost more passive for those who are living in the spirit. That's a good way to word that. And that's, that's something And, I and that's not to say that, like, well, we can't do it, so we must well just sit back and wait for God to do it. I don't, yeah. I don't mean that either. I think, I think with everything, right? You know, the Lord wants us to collaborate and cooperate with Him, oh, yeah. right? He, he, we're, 
we're God's children and, and he's transforming us, right? And molding right. us and shaping us so that we really become his children, right? In the fullest sense. So, so we have to cooperate with God's grace and, and they're all, part of the burden is shifted to us, yeah. not because we can do it on our own, but because he wants us to be part of it. He wants to share in his glory, oh, yeah. right? And to share in his glory, we have to share in that. We have to share in the suffering. We have to share in the cross. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so we have to be part of this, right? Yeah. Not because, you know, he's punishing us, but because, because he wants to share all of it with us, mm-hmm. right? Um, but it's not going to happen based purely mm-hmm. on human power because, because. Well, and that's yeah. why I, I like that tier system, you know, where it's tier one, Jesus, God. I, I think probably even some of the sacraments, a lot, a lot of that stuff, we're on the same page. I have no problem calling you my brother. I don't have a problem calling you Father Pat. You know, like that's no problem at all thinking of each other as Christian. But also, because of this kind of disbelief, it makes sense to go to different churches. Like the domin- denomination thing makes sense. Not that the divides make sense, but that worshiping differently so that we can express what we believe in our worship makes a lot of sense. And that's why I like that kind of system there. Yeah. It makes sense. Because then you're able to be like, okay, we're on tier one. That's what matters. Tier two, we disagree. All right. It's different church. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, not a big deal. Yeah. All right. Did you want to... Now can we just speed up? <laughs> yeah. I think right. it's speed around. All right. It's you since it's your handwriting. <laughs> Well, you read the rest. All right, so the first thing we wanted to ask you about was the rosary. Wait, wait, is speedrun starting? Yeah, speedrun starting. Get, should we start? Should we explain the rules again for those who are listening who maybe yes hadn't heard it before? Yes. Cool. So the rules of speed round. We're gonna ask Father Pat here. We're gonna ask you eight questions. I added one during the podcast. <laughs> we're gonna ask eight questions. If you can answer it in a sentence, we'd love you to do that. If not, you just say pass. We'll go to the next one and see how fast we can get through this. All right. Okay. All right. The first thing I wanted to ask you about was the rosary. What is it for? Um, simplest way to describe it is asking Mary, the mother of God, to pray for us. All right. Excellent. So, can priests get married? <laughs> can I do that in a sentence? If you, you can, can, say pass. Say pass. I, I can't do it in a sentence. All right. All right. That's fine. I'll, um... Was Mary born from a virgin? Yeah, because I've, I've heard this before, whether it's like a... No. Okay. <laughs> All right, that threw me off. <laughs> wow, that goes with this. Uh, All right, uh, how does the Catholic Church view spiritual gifts? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, question like gifts for, for one sentence. Um, it can be a run-on sentence. <laughs> Spiritual gifts are an essential part of our vocation, our call from God, and we are called to use them in service to the church. All right. Uh, does the church actually believe that the Eucharist ter- becomes Christ's blood and flesh? flesh? Absolutely. All right. That was one word. <laughs> uh, what is the difference between a cathedral and a church? A cathedral is the bishop's church. It's the... It's the Liter- the, literally the seat of the bishop, right? So it's the bishop's church. Right. A, a church is... What is the Pope? Does the Pope speak? Does the Pope, does the Pope speak? preach? I mean, I mean no, he, <laughs> he has his own Twitter feed. He just tweets. <laughs> he doesn't need to he speak. Just, <laughs> he only has thumbs, no matter. The Pope does preach, absolutely, yes. Yeah. He, he celebrates Mass just like I do. Um, he generally has a few more people at his Masses than I do. But yes, he preaches pretty much every day, just like I do. So is it like... What is his church called? Is it just a cathedral? Well, the Pope, every church is the Pope's church, however, in, in the sense that, you know, he's the universal head of, you know, the church. But but um, the Pope does have the cathedral. It's the Cathedral of St. John Lateran in Rome. That's the that's the Pope's church as the Bishop of Rome, right? Um, but, you but know, it's, you can go to any church, right? It is I kind of want to, like, buzz. There's no follow-up questions. <laughs> right. That's true. All right. Did you say it this well, I didn't it's, say it this getting, It's not very All right, speedy. so... Not very speed round. Yes. Yeah. How does the modern Catholic Church view the doctrine of being justified by faith? How does how do we view it? Um, does the modern Catholic Church believe that you can be justified by faith? We are just we are justified by faith. Um, you know, but but we believe that be, but fi- that faith leads to naturally leads to being collaborators with the Lord and his work of salvation. James um, 2 stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Protestant churches 
are usually very iconoclastic. Catholic churches seem to be less so. Is there a reason for that? A kind of clastic? Like, um... Meaning... They don't believe in showing the image of Christ right. yeah, or the yeah, image yeah. of it. Um, so, w- repeat your yeah. question, sorry. Uh, most Protestant churches are supposedly strongly against that. Mm-hmm. Catholic churches aren't. Where did that, um, deviate? Or why, Where did why deviate? does that deviate? Or why do we believe what we believe? So, Either one. so I would say that Catholics, um... I would say that we recognize that that um, human beings experience experience reality through our senses, right? Sight being one of them, right? So that that we are very comfortable with images in general, whether they be statues or um, icons or, or you know those types of things, because they remind us um, and help us to feel closer to the realities that they represent. That's good. I All like right. those like pauses because I think he was trying to make sure he didn't end the sentence. That was great. All right, so that was that was speed round. Yeah. Okay, good speed round. Yeah, four minutes. Oh yeah. So uh, as we're getting ready to wrap this up, I just want to ask the the big question is how can practically? I always like to give the guy a name. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go with a Joe today. Yeah, I'm feeling Joe. How does Joe from you know either if he goes to a Catholic church or if he goes to a Protestant church, what can Joe do? The individual guy who just happens to go to church to kind of further the unity between the Catholic Protestant kind of gap. Share his faith. All right. Is that simple? It is that simple. I I think, I think, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's, there's a hesitation in our culture to share faith, right? Because we don't know how it's going to be received. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, so we tend to not talk about it at all. Right. If we're in the workplace, if we're in at the supermarket, you know, we're, we're, we hesitate to talk about it. One of the things that's amazing that, of course, if I go out dressed like this, right? Yeah. Uh, or if in the, I'm in the airport or I'm, whatever, you know what I mean? If I'm dressed yeah. in, in, a, in a priest's clerical clothing, right? Um, people then are freed <laughs> to be able to come talk to me about their faith. Right. And they do, right? I've given them permission by what I'm wearing. Yeah. Right? But, but, in general, and well, I shouldn't say that because I mean, you could do the same thing. If you if you wore uh, a cross very prominently around your neck, people, although unfortunately the cross has become sometimes just a piece of jewelry, yeah. So you wouldn't maybe maybe a cross wouldn't do it for some people, but they might they might remark on it. They might they might say, "Hey, that's a beautiful cross." Or if you're wearing you know, a shirt that had your church's name, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's or what we do. right, exactly. Where yeah. you wear a shirt, yeah. wear a shirt with your, you know, you might be yeah. you might be feel comfortable saying to that person, "Hey, would you pray for, with me?" or or yeah. Where do you go to church? I'm maybe at your church or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. starting that conversation. I go to this. I see you go to this church. I go to this church. You know, they might be more comfortable doing that. So I think people need to be feel if we're going to if we're going to have unity, we need to be able to talk yeah. about our faith with each other. Yeah. Speaking of apparel, just fun fact, I was actually gifted one of the rosary bracelets last oh, week. Okay. Yeah. So I started trying to memorize some of the decades just so I could know what they are. Mm-hmm. So I think it's an interesting idea. Not that I'm planning on turning Catholic, but I think a lot of the practices are very cool. I think they're useful to the faith. So yeah, and that's, and that's, really cool thing. and that's what the rosary is supposed to lead you to, right? Um, yeah. do you, uh, Catholics are not obligated to pray the rosary. Lots of yeah. Catholics do pray the rosary. I pray the rosary every day. Okay. Yeah. But you, we're not obligated to pray the rosary. A rosary is a sacramental. I call yeah. it a sacramental um, because it's something that leads us to deeper devotion. We feel like it helps us. So by meditating on the mysteries of Jesus's life and, and, and through the eyes of the Blessed Mother, through the eyes of his mother, we can draw closer to Christ. That's what the rosary is for. It's not to worship Mary. It's not to pray yeah. to Mary. It's, it's to see the, see Jesus's life through Mary's eyes. Right. That's cool stuff. Man, I was going to ask a lot more about the sacramental and a lot, a lot of other stuff. We kind of barely scratched the surface, but I do think that it, if I go any longer, no one's going to really want to listen to something. <laughs> this <time>. So <laughs> right, we'll start trying to wrap it up. Um, if people did start sharing their faith more, if you know that Joe, if they, we start doing that communicating. What are some visible changes we'd be able to see in the world around us? People are more at free to talk to one another about faith. What would the ramifications be? Um, I think. I think first of all, we'd see people praying together. Fantastic, right? Which you rarely see. So yeah. I, th- I think people would feel free to pray together and to pray publicly, right? Yeah. Um, and they would feel free to be asking people to pray for them, 
right? Yeah. And anytime you are inviting someone to pray for you, you, by definition, are going to be more um, you're going to be more compassionate to them. Right. Yeah. One of the things that, that we've started to do, I have, you know, I have a big staff here. It's a big church, right? Yeah. I, I meet with, I meet with my managers every Monday morning. And, um, one of the things that we added to our staff meeting was pr- at the end of the staff meeting t- to ask each other for prayer intentions. You know, what, wh- what should we pray yeah. for? Right. That to me has added an, an a, a wonderful dem- and we work in a church, right? You would think yeah. we pray for one another, right? You would hope, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah. that adds, you know, and, and again, it's a big staff, and it, it is a workplace in addition to being a church for the people that work here, right? Yeah. Um, and just knowing or being more aware of what's going on in one another's lives because we're praying for each other, yeah. right, has brought us closer together. Imagine if that was happening worldwide. One of the things that we added, um, if you would have been here at three o'clock, I don't know if you were at three o'clock the last time. I, I were I was here you were here, but but my phone will go off at three o'clock. All right. And the reason that it goes off at three o'clock is because we have asked, we started as this team, yeah. right? And then we expanded it to our staff, and now we've expanded it to our parish. We've asked our entire parish to set their alarm for three o'clock and at three o'clock to pray the Lord's Prayer for the intentions of one another. Right? It yeah, takes yeah. literally twenty seconds to pray the Lord's Prayer, right? Wow. But if we're doing that, right, if we're praying for each other, then then we're going to grow closer together, right? We're going to have church unity. We're going to have, right, be, because because we're loving one another. We're, we're intentionally loving one another. And that's... And uh, making it a point to stop and do it. Part of Christ's whole mission is that you'll, that's how they'll know his followers are those who love one another. Right. It's good stuff. You know, I wish we had a name for our people. The whole church nation out there, let's... Uh, Let's get some people to join St. Matthew's Church. Let's set an alarm for 3 o'clock and pray with them. Yeah. That'd be awesome. We would love Let's that. Let's do it. Let's pray for one another. Lord's 3 o'clock every day. 20 yep. seconds, guys. That's all it takes. I think that's that's real practical, real cool. I love that. So, Everybody who wants to this, you're now required to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thus, it's an obligation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't get a choice. <laughs> Man, so we do our God moment of the week. Yeah. Which is um, anything God's challenged us with, anything that you know we just... Want to thank God for, or um, any spiritual moment really that's happened in the last week that's impacted our lives. Is we want to share, just so uh, I don't know why, why do we do this? Uh, you said we should start doing God moments on the podcast, and I was like, I don't, I don't know what that is, but okay. You know, Dolores and uh, Marie just did a whole entire podcast about why we need to look for God moments. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think it's just uh, seeing God in the day to day in a intentionally acknowledging him. I think it just builds everybody up spiritually. And I think it feels more connected when you know what's going on in one another's lives in that way. Mm-hmm. That's a good reason why we do God moments. I'm going to go with that. All right. Do you want to start? You can go first. Why don't I go first? You're in charge. Hmm. I can go first. I can't. I can't think of one. My God moment of the week was uh, I just had a staph infection. Oof. Yeah, it, it cropped up probably a little right out a week ago, I would say. But um, it was right here, and it's not really there now. He's pointing to the center of his forehead, yeah, by the way. which yep. is... Thank you. Empty. <laughs> but uh, it cleared up really fast, and it didn't hurt at all, which, uh, you know, I, I'd like to call that my God moment of the week because <laughs> shingles... Oh, not shingles. I had shingles I had in shingles. the sixth grade. Did you really? Yeah. It's young it shingles. didn't hurt at all. Uh, I had it, it hurt. Yeah, right? It's supposed to. Mm-hmm. And I would like to thank God for not making my staph infection hurt. Yeah. Or my shingles. Like, 12 years ago. 12 years ago. But yeah, that's my God moment of the week. Hmm. I had mine and then I forgot it. All right. <laughs> Father Pat, do you have a God moment of the week? Yeah, I would say it was yesterday. I, um, I had one of, I don't remember which Mass it was. I think it might have been the 5.30 Sunday evening Mass. And, um, you know, I greet people after the service, and this young man came up to me. He was now a college student at NC State, um, but he was a former parishioner of mine when I was at my previous parish at St. John Newman, which is in East Charlotte. And I had not seen him, I mean, since I left there, so about two years ago. And he came over to this side of town and 
went to mass at St. Matt's just to see me. And he hadn't seen me in a couple of years. And so he sort of surprised me and came up to me and he, you know, told me how he was doing and how he was at NC State and he was doing well and he was doing an internship this summer. And, um, but he was just, he was just excited to see me and I was just as excited to see him. So it was, it was a, it was a great, uh, it really made my night, made my day. Love when that happens. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. I got it. I think think the problem was I thought of it a few times and then I was like, man, how do I even word this? Because it involves a close friend of mine. I don't want to like out any of their personal life Mm -hmm. without their permission. But, um, we've had some, some arguments lately, me me and one of my good friends and, uh, I wouldn't say, you know, it was angry or anything, but it, you, you could tell the relationship was really damaged and it was just saddened me just kind of losing kind of the touch with someone like that. And, uh, I kept being angry and addressing it kind of from an angry perspective. And, uh, it took, uh, I had a conversation with another one of my friends and I prayed about it and I realized, Hey, there might be a more passive way to look at this, a way where I don't address it with anger, but say, Hey, what if we think about the problem in this other perspective? And I, I kind of suggested that and was just thinking about it more of a perspective of understanding immediately kind of relieved a lot of the tension, rebuilt a lot of the relationship. And I can feel the love there in a different way that was like, okay, God kind of just showing me that, hey, sometimes you need a different perspective. And that was a good reminder. I mean, I guess I already knew that. It's a good reminder. All right. So, you, so you want to start outroing? Yeah. Uh, make How sure can you help us. <laughs> make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the Whole Church Podcast. Yeah, if you're um, not already following us, the way you're listening to us. Please yeah. do that as well. Yeah, we're on Spotify. We're on iTunes. We're on a lot of different things. Anything you can think to share the podcast to, do that. It helps us a lot. Uh, we also want any comments or any feedback you guys might have so we can do this to the best of our abilities. And we believe everything we do, we do as a reflection of God's work and God's kingdom. So we want to reflect the best that we can. Um, if you have some mirrors, send them in. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, email us at thewholechurch at gmail.com. Not the whole church podcast, just the whole church. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Because we need it. Yeah. Well, we I have think to we have Kentucky. one, three, five, and ten dollar tiers right now. Um, I think we just changed it because I realized uh, that they can just kind of choose how much they want to donate. So just kind of click donate and then it'll let you decide how much you want to give a month and then just do that. I just followed you on Facebook. Thank, Thank you. Just so you know. Excellent. Okay. Fantastic. Everyone follow Father Pat's example. <laughs> there yeah. you go. So, yeah, be I'm like doing him. what I can. I can't do Instagram <laughs> or the other ones, but I do a Facebook, so. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Right. Awesome. Do what you can. That's what I can do. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna post something on Facebook and Instagram, probably about the prayer at three o'clock too. I think that's just a really powerful. That's idea. awesome. I would that love. That might be my God yeah. moment of the week. Actually, and I would love. I would love to be able to say to you know the people that are here. Hey, guess what? You know we've got we're yeah. spreading like yeah. we're we're, we're right. praying for each other. So yes, but, that's just a neat idea. Yeah. So who are some future guests? Future guests. Uh, we have Judy Knoll. I, I, I want to announce the one because he's one of my favorite authors. Okay. Donald Don- Whitney Don- was going to be. <laughs> you were good. He was about to try and beat me to it. Donald Whitney is going to be on the podcast in the two or three weeks. Also, Peter Enns. Peter Enns agreed to be on the podcast. Yeah, and he, he has his own podcast. It's uh, the Bible for Normal People. So that's a great one if you want to check that out as well. In the future. Well, we have several lined up, but who don't have a set date. We have uh, Sister Sylvia will be in a few weeks as well. Sylvia, uh, Sylvia brother Staten. Jeff White. Yeah, has agreed to be on it at a later date. No, we don't know. So, same thing with Brother McLaughlin, yeah. who's our state overseer for Church of Prophecy in South Carolina. And then, um, of course, at the end of season one, Francis Chan. He just doesn't know it yet. Yeah. Thank you guys okay. for listening.